Welcome back to another motherboard review in the Z690 range, and this time it is from Aorus and their Master Edition, which is coming in at a steep price of 470 USD, and then in Australia it's 800 Aussie dollars. So just like the Strix E Gaming motherboard we recently reviewed, I am going to point out the discrepancy in the Australian pricing, even though it's not as bad as the Zeus Strix E. But that was coming in with an absolutely ridiculous differential. This one is just teetering on that borderline of too high for those Aussies. However, this board right here on the surface, it looks like it has all the hardware packed and then some. If you're looking for the dollar value versus what the other higher end boards are offering, this one does look like on the surface that it does have it all. Though, let's look at the VRM. 22 phases and this is an absolute monster of a VRM. We've got 105 amp MOSFETs, we've got high capacity chokes, tantalum capacitors, and a PWM controller that is of the digital kind. So they have wasted no time in putting together a flawless VRM in my opinion. This thing is absolutely overkill even for a 12900K and the results showed as such. Well, we've got 59 degrees on the heatsink, which is a fin design. This is one of my favorite heatsinks when it comes to implementation on a motherboard. And then we've got 67 degrees on the PCB after a 30 minute Cinebench R23 stress test. And out of the box, this CPU does go up to five to 5.1 gigahertz. So Gigabyte are definitely the most aggressive when it comes to taking your CPU out of the box and then taking it as high as it can go. Where 5.1 gigahertz is my manual overclock here in my current ambient and temperature conditions with the cooler that I'm using, the H159 Platinum. Though I will say that when we're looking at these VRM temperatures, they are a little bit higher than that of the previous two Asus boards. And that's because this did take it to 290 watts. So it was clocking higher and it was then using more power out of the box. And then we go on to the manual overclocks and it's something I would like to see gigabyte improve and that is that I did have to tweak a lot to get this down to 260 watts of power usage at 5.1 gigahertz whereas opposed to the Strix E Gaming took it down to around 253 watts so the Strix E Gaming was winning out very slightly on the manual overclocks and I believe this just has to do with the default aggressive nature of the VRM settings applied within the BIOS on the Aorus Master where I believe they need to tune down things like the V-Droop where I had 1.245 volt on the CPU core as opposed to some of the other boards where I was locking in a lot higher and getting lower wattage. Though speaking of the BIOS, here's where I'll point out a few things that I think could use improvement. And that is when we're going through the whole menu, everything, all the options are there. If you know what you're doing with overclocking, you're gonna have a good time in this BIOS. It's got all the options you need, but then I'd like to see it structured a little bit easier on the eyes, especially when it comes to things like organizing things in sub tabs, just to make things easier to read in what brackets of settings you're going to be using, especially when it comes to overclocking. And I also had some problems where my M.2 drive didn't show up in the BIOS and then I had to reflash the BIOS and then it showed up. And then there was also another problem where the BIOS just straight out froze. Though on top of that, I would like to see RGB control implemented within the BIOS itself and also internet update features in the BIOS. As I believe paying this kind of money, you would just want an absolute flawless experience, not just when it comes to getting good VRM temperatures, but actually utilization of the features within the motherboard itself. And so I think having a BIOS that works flawlessly would add into that whole overall experience. But moving on with heat sinks and temperatures, here's where Gigabyte have spared no expense, just like the VRM heatsink, which is literally just massive. It's probably the biggest VRM heatsink I've seen to date. They've done this also for the M.2, and you've got five slots in total, all PCIe X 4x4, and here's where the temperatures were absolutely phenomenal, scoring a max of 46 degrees on an ASSSD loop stress test, and then 45 degrees on the PCB, and then 38 degrees on the heatsink. Also, the speeds of the M.2, the USB 3, and the 10 gigabyte NIC were all checking out perfectly fine. I will say, this is the first board that I've seen here with a 10 gigabit NIC on board, so it does already differentiate itself from other boards around this price range by including that high-end NIC. Though moving through the onboard audio, here's where Gigabyte make a big statement that they've got some of the best onboard audio 
going into this board where we feature a Realtek ALC 1220 as well as an ESS Sabre 9118 DAC as well as Wima audio capacitors. And here's where you will want to use the front audio output as opposed to the rear, even though the frequency response on the front and rear were identical. And also it was an extremely good frequency response. It's actually the best I've seen from a motherboard to date. So congratulations to Gigabyte and this Aorus Master for scoring the best frequency response curve I've seen. Just pretty much perfectly flat with very minimal bass roll off from 10 hertz and under. So it's gonna be a great listening experience. But if you're using audio, especially with mid-range cans or something like that, you will wanna use the front audio out because the crosstalk is a lot better on the front where we're scoring minus 84 decibels versus the rear, which was getting minus 75 decibels. So minus 75 decibels, it's getting into that area of, okay, you're gonna slightly hear left and right channels going into each other. And it actually will be, in my opinion, noticeable as opposed to minus 84, minus 85. That's gonna be a good experience where you'll be able to separate those channels and hear sounds clearly, especially if you're playing competitive FPS. They're going through the mic input. Here's where they've done a really good job of pretty much a noiseless mic input. Very strong, great if you want to stream. Though I will caution, leave this on volume of 50, maximum of plus 30 dB. If you go any higher, noise will start to creep in, especially over the volume level of 80. It will get very noticeable noise creeping in. They're moving through the rear input output. Here's where we've got nine standard USB ports. We've got two type C supporting Thunderbolt 4. And on top of that, you've got Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth support and a display port out and included is gold tipped audio connectors. Now you may also notice they've included a BIOS flashback as well as a clear CMOS button there. And then at the front, they've included a power button and a BIOS code readout. Now on top of that, you do get 10 four pin PWM fan headers as well as two USB front outs and a Thunderbolt add-in expansion. You've got top RGB control bottom, so two each on five and 12 volt for full RGB control, which you will need to use the RGB Fusion 2.0 software in Windows if you want to control your RGB. So with that testing aside, it is now time for the conclusion and I'll give you guys my thoughts and opinions on this motherboard. And honestly, it is just one of those boards that has everything you would want from a motherboard. Though of course, there's that price tag and it is extremely steep and there are some teething issues with this board. I would like to see Gigabyte update the BIOS and fix some of these things that I've critiqued in this review, especially to make it a flawless experience because I feel at this price range, you do want that flawless experience. And I think you're close to getting it out of the box where it'll lock in your XMP profiles, at least automatically for me. And then it also overclocks the CPU, but it does so whilst overclocking it with higher wattage than is ideal for what my CPU can handle. So it's great for someone who just wants to jump in. They don't mind a bit of extra power usage. But when it comes to the manual tinkering and just setting things up, there are a few pet peeves involved in that process. Though if I had to make a choice between the Z690 Dash E Strix Gaming and the Aorus Master, at this point in time, I would choose the Aorus Master because I feel like you just get that extra hardware for your dollar, especially in the case of that 10 gigabit onboard NIC. That can come in handy for a lot of people, especially if they're outlaying this kind of money. I'm probably sure they're going to be thinking about having a network with high files, transfer speeds, and just having that NIC on board is a great deciding factor between the higher end boards, as well as the fact that you are saving 20 US dollars or in Australia, you're saving a lot more money when it comes to the Aorus Master versus the Strix Gaming. Other than that, I would like to see Gigabyte release as soon as possible a polished BIOS update just to make people get that pretty much close to flawless experience when it comes to spending this kind of money. Anyway guys, I'm gonna get on to the final Z690 motherboard review. This is the Tai Chi, and then we'll get back to some juicy used stuff. I'll also got some cool comparisons coming up, but these companies, they send these boards through and they just want a review done. And for me, it's like an open book. I'm just gonna to talk to you guys about what I like and don't like about the boards, and also hand that feedback back to uh, Gigabyte and Zeus and uh, ASRock, et cetera. But in the end, I feel like with these Z690 motherboards in general, I would like to see them pretty much flawless, where I know in the past, a lot of these motherboard manufacturers have done those flawless motherboard releases and they have been better priced. I feel like Z690 is coming in with a very expensive price tag in general. And that is a little bit discerning because the 12th gen CPUs themselves are coming in with, I feel, very competitive value, especially things like the i7 and the i5, and then the upcoming uh, 12400F, if that gets released, 
these CPUs will be top dog. And I feel like when you've got motherboards that are coming in with better value, it really just makes that whole experience better for the end user. Though, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Yorkshire and they ask, hi Brian, would you consider making a video on the stops and hardware used to test the audio of a motherboard? I, I would do a video like that, maybe on a different channel. I just feel like a lot of people wouldn't really be interested in it, especially if they're just buying a motherboard and they don't really care, they just want the results, right? They just wanna know, is the audio good? Is it bad? Can I go onto the next board? Which board should I be getting for my money? But I will quickly give you guys a detail here and that is I use a program called REW. I found this program way back, like I think it was like 2015 and it was just phenomenal. It allows you to just get easy numbers that are reliable and then you can relay that to your audience and say, hey, this onboard audio is good, it's bad. And uh, the latest update is they've changed the UI around. So they just keep improving the program. And of course it's free. No one has to pay any money for it. Though on that note, you maybe want to use an external device sometimes if you're getting really whack numbers. In the case of testing laptops, for example, you can get some really crazy numbers. So you just want to double check that as well. Like we did here today, I did check the front and the rear audio and I was getting different results. So that enabled me to say, hey, if you want to get the Aorus Master and get the best onboard audio experience out of this motherboard, then you should be using that front audio out and not the rear. Anyhow guys, hope that answers that question. And with that aside, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that Tech Yes content, be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now, bye.